Hey guys, Alex Allgood here from Broad Productions, and today I'm going to show you how to color correct inside of After Effects. I am using CS6 on a Mac, but uh, this applies to all versions of After Effects and any operating system, so don't feel left out. Um, and this is also a technical guide, not a creative guide. I can't tell you how to color correct your shot to how you want it, because uh, I don't know what it's like. So, uh, use this as a guide rather than a tutorial. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. I have a shot here of a music video I shot uh, a couple months ago, and it's really flat and disgusting and makes me want to throw up. So, uh, I'm here in After Effects, like I said, over and over again. <laughs> uh, I just select your clip, uh, go to Effect, Color, Correction. Um, I like to use a couple different effects uh, for different reasons. Um, curves and levels are probably the two best go-tos out of here. We're going to start with levels. Now, I really like levels because it has a histogram of your image. Um, that way, you can look at it and adjust off that rather than your image, just in case your monitor is awkward or, or not calibrated or whatever. And that being said, make sure you're editing on a good monitor. Um, maybe even compare them because your calibration in your monitor will kill all of your color correction. Maybe color correct it, then export it and look at it on a different monitor and a couple different just to test out your monitor to make sure it is calibrated or is you know what you want because that is very very important for color correction um so now back to levels um there's two things you want to adjust while color correcting your there's your luma and then there's your color luma is the actual luminance of the shot your darks to whites your blacks to whites um, the actual contrast of it. Um, then you got, of course, your color. So I usually like to start out with Luma and just get the uh, contrast on the shot where I want it and then adjust color. So I'm going to keep it on the stock RGB, which is all the color. So that is your Luma. As you can see, it's not changing the color, just the contrast. And I like to usually put my darks a little further, just since this is pretty flat. You can kind of judge it by the histogram right there. Same thing with the highs. Um, not always, though. It'll sometimes blow out like it will there on the ground and in the sky and stuff. Um, but, you know, just enough to where you're not blown out and you're not crushing your blacks completely. And then you can kind of just move the gamma in the middle um, just around to kind of just fine-tune it. Um, a little bit, maybe about there. And then right under that, you have your outputs, which doesn't necessarily judge it off the luminance, but it's just a straight up fader. It's kind of like the opacity in a sense. You see how it's not actually affecting the image. It's just taking the transparency down. I typically don't really use that um, unless I just want to make the image a little brighter or a little darker as a whole. Um, say like that, if I just want to darken the image a little bit. But Usually I can adjust that up top on the histogram, but I like that. So let's go ahead and move into color. Now, moving into color, let's talk about the color wheel. I know it's like art class in high school. <laughs> oh, homework. Eh. Soak it up. So, uh, <laughs> I'm silly. Um, the biggest thing for color correction is primary and secondary colors. Um, you got your blue to yellow and then red um, and then orange, green, and violet as I'm reading the S's and P's. Um, <laughs> so let's say like uh, you want your shadows to be blue and your highlights to be yellow. That's a very popular one. I see that a lot. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that because they're complementary so they look good together. Now to create that primary color contrast within your image, I like to use uh, curves. So back, go back to color correction and go to curves. Now this is pretty, it does, they all do pretty much the same thing, all the different color correction effects. Um, it's just uh, a different approach to how to do them. On levels, it is a little bit more technical. And here with uh, curves, it's a little bit more visual. Um, the further you go down, the darker it gets. Higher you go, the brighter it gets. So this is again on RGB. There's a reset button right here. Go ahead and reset it. We've already adjusted our Luma, so we will now go into blue. If it'll work. Oh, come on! 
blue. There we go. Okay, so I want the shadows to be a little blue and the highlights to be a little yellow, kind of like an Instagram filter. This is like hiptastic. So we will take the blue, oh, out of the way, up a notch, right in the shadows, which is the bottom. It's right about there. And then we'll take our middle, put it back in the center, so that way it doesn't adjust the highlights as well. And then we'll go the exact opposite on the other end. Kind of like that. And, you know, you can make it as drastic as you want. Um, very subtle. That looks kind of cool. But also you can make it very intense. Um, kind of like that. And then you can bring this little hoop down. Get rid of that. Um, and then address the middle point a little to more blue or yellow as a whole. Be like there. You know, uh, you might have to address your contrast a little bit more back to your Luma. But, you know, it's kind of like blue and yellow. It, it, again, it all determines on what you're looking for. For this shot, I want a little green and grunge. So I'm going to go ahead and take off curves. Um, I don't need that anymore. I'm going to do this through levels. And I'm going to go to the green channel. Now... Uh, on the other side of green is like a magenta. Uh, I actually really enjoy the magenta green combo. So um, let's go ahead and green it up a little, maybe to about right there. Uh, you, I don't really like messing with highlights too much. Whenever I color correct, I usually primarily stick to the uh, the lows. Whenever you adjust highs, it kind of washes out the image a little bit. But go ahead and make it a little magenta. Then green it up. You know, the closer you get, obviously, the more dramatic this is going to be. Um, kind of like that. That looks pretty cool. Pretty grungy. I, I really like that feel. And then you can adjust the gamma a little bit more. Um, now you even throw a little red right back in there. Make it just a little bit more green. Bring out his jacket a little. Um, so, you know, it's all personal preference. You really, color correction is more fooling around and testing out than anything else editing wise. This is where you'll sit here and just play with buttons till you figure it out. No one really goes into color correction thinking they know exactly how they want it, exactly what buttons to push, exactly what number to put in. It's all play. So if you're going into it as a guessing game, you're doing the right thing because you that's really what it is. Um, so there's that. Now let's dive into a couple more effects in the color correction folder. Um, there's some pretty self-explanatory ones like who, hue, who, <laughs> like Doctor Who, um, hue and saturation, which uh, I use primarily just for saturation, which is a fancy word for black and white. As you can see, black and white, and then saturation really blowing out the colors, which again could both be used for cool things. Maybe for this, you could desaturate it a little, and it kind of gives you like a zombie post-apocalyptic kind of look. So maybe desaturate it, get some colors out of there, and make it look a little bit more dry. All right, so now that we have the primary color correction done, we'll get more into secondary color correction. Now, you'll probably see those words a lot when you're looking into color correction, and I'll tell you what they are. Primary is what we just did. That's where you affect the entire image as a whole. Secondary is when you get really OCD about things. Like, say, I want just his jacket to be a little bit more red. That's secondary color correction. So um, there's a couple ways we can do this. Actually, two different ways. You can do a change to color right here, but then you have to worry about all this. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into a adjustment layer by going to layer new adjustment layer. Um, now on here, we will do whatever effects we need. We will go into effects, color correction, uh, where is it? Change to color. Not change color, but change to color. 
we'll go ahead and zoom into our image. We'll focus on um, his red jacket. Oh, man, I need a new computer. This thing is bugging out on me. Technology. Okay, so first things first, we're going to want to create a mask. So we're going to go up here to the pin tool with adjustment layer selected. And it doesn't have to be right around him, but, you know, kind of, sort of in the ballpark. And if there's certain colors, like this red star, I think it's a star, we'll kind of just be a little bit more detailed around that. And yes, my computer is slowly catching up to me. There it is. Oh, there's one. Boom, there's another. There's another. Oh yeah, there it is. Boom. And then we'll click to complete the mask. Now the adjustment layer will only be affected within this. Now we'll go back to change to color inside of this. Maybe even click the arrow back, the select tool. Uh, and we'll go to the from option, eyedropper. And we'll just pick a pretty generic color from the jacket, maybe from there. And we'll change to, I don't know, blue. Now we'll have to change the tolerance so it doesn't look like this. <laughs> change the hue to a little higher so that way it affects his jacket as a whole. Now the biggest thing that's going to save you here is the softness slider. You just kind of want to do that, just kind of blends it in just a little bit. So now his jacket is a blue, and we can take off that right there. And the mask is pretty crappy, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. Um, you can always put in another mask, say like we affected his face, he looks terrible, sickly, very ill. Um, you can throw another mask inside, mask around his face, and then get rid of that by doing this. Watch as my computer waits and waits. Any day now, computer. Any day. Boom. There it is. Cool. So now we'll go back into our adjustment layer. Click the little knob. We will go into masks, second mask, and click subtract. So now his face is back to normal. So now we have just done a secondary color correction, creating his jacket to be blue. I'll go ahead and soften this mask a little bit. Um, secondary color correction is really good for like sky and ocean stuff. It's when you correct your whole image and say water turns like an ugly brown or ugly green and you know, but everything else is what you want it to look like. Use a secondary color correction to turn that water a little bit more blue, um, back to how you want it. You can expand the mask a little bit. Um, so there that is, did that make any sense? I don't know. All right, so there we go. There is our secondary and primary color correction. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our secondary because that blue doesn't necessarily match this shot. And, uh, and if your object moves for the secondary color correction, you'll just want to track your adjustment layer. Now, I already have a tutorial about tracking an After Effects. There should be an annotation that pops up right about now that will further explain that. Click that. Watch that, learn that, and you'll know how to track, and then come back to this and just track this layer to where you want it. Bada bing, bada boom, you get it done. Yeah, just like that. Go give me a hoagie. Okay, it's a terrible accent. So that being said, those are the basics of color correction. Um, you really want to focus on your primary, uh, and then you know secondary is just all that little intensive things just to pretty up little parts of the image. Um, remember, color correction is a total, like, button mashing, guessing game. Take your time with it. Adjust things how you want it. Remember to go Luma and then RGB, and then you'll be good to go. Um, look at a color wheel. Look at it and say, all right, if I turn my image a little bit blue, what can I turn to make it a little yellow? If I'm going to turn my image green, what can I make it a little bit more magenta? Those kinds of things. That way, your colors match. Because once you learn and really think about the color wheel, it'll help you so much out in color correction.
Guys, thanks so much for watching this. Uh, I'll probably come out with more specific color correction tutorials later, um, but I hope you like this just as a generic whole. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Submit a video response of your film or shot or whatever you did to color correct. I would love to see it. Um, submit it as a video response. And uh, as always, subscribe. Everyone, have a fantastic day. Keep shooting. Keep editing. Keep learning. See you later, guys.